So, Instagram for the past week has been a little bit upset with me. What have you been doing now? It decided that it didn't like the knife along, some of the knife along posts I'd done. <laughs> so originally it didn't like three of them. And so I deleted three of them. And then it decided it would pick on one more. And uh, it didn't like that. So I've been... It's not killed my account, but what it has done is it's not shared any of my content to non-followers. So nothing's yeah. got out of the bubble, so to speak, for the last week. And if anybody finds themselves in this position, what you have to do is delete all the content. Don't press the appeal button because that does nothing. You delete all your content mm. and then all of a sudden everything becomes okay again. And then you just restore all your content and you're all good again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a re-upload of the same yeah, thing. Yeah, you just so. restore it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, once you delete something, it's in the uh, it's in the trash bin for uh, thirty days. Ah, uh, yeah. So you just actually put the same thing <laughs> it, back, and, and it puts it straight back in the same space. It doesn't come up as new content. Oh God, I hate this moronic version of AI we're having at the moment. I mean. Can't we get a proper, actual, intelligent AI <laughs> sometime soon, please? Well, I guess it's just running like humans, isn't it? Some of it's intelligent and some of it's not. <laughs> You're going to get some yeah. AI that's an asshole, some that's a really nice AI. <laughs> yeah, I think this one has some of the worst, uh, only the worst parts of, of being human, I feel <laughs> like. <laughs> it's really stupid, the content that it... it decided it didn't like that went against their guidelines i mean there was nothing in there offensive there's plenty of knife makers on instagram and one of the things yeah. was my knife spreading butter i mean maybe it was just too sexy for them i'm not sure uh, probably probably <laughs> <laughs> but i don't that's maybe the one thing i hate about this especially the social media companies but companies in general you even if you go on someone's homepage, you get no information. Uh, and of course, many of them don't even have like a form you can fill in to send a message or an email. It's just a frequently asked questions. If no. you're lucky, they have a chat bot, but that doesn't do anything for anyone in any situations. And um, a friend of me had her Facebook account blocked because they said, well, she didn't use her real name. And of course she did. So how they came to that conclusion, no one knows. <laughs> and she has spent, I think it's over one and a half year trying to chasing to find someone that can help her. And it took her <laughs> close to a year before she got a hold of a representative from tech support it's almost impossible to like find the way in to actually talk to someone. And then of course that person could not figure out why it had happened because they, at that level, they don't understand the, their own algorithms and AI and how the systems for screening things and shutting things out work. So it, it took almost an extra half year on top of that <laughs> to get her account restored. And it's insane. That she would yeah. want the Facebook account restoring in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's also the one thing. People have passed away, and of course, their relatives, they want to shut down accounts and so on, and it's a real struggle. Um, and of course, I, I was lucky enough that uh, I had my father's password when he passed away. Um, and uh, of course, that gave us access to all his accounts. Um, and of course, I own the the email domain, so I could uh, reset passwords for all the emails and so on. So it made the process really easy, but people are struggling with uh, old family photos being out there, not being able to delete them because the owner has passed away or the system won't allow you to talk to anyone. So it's really frustrating. You feel like you are way into the 1984 novel. <laughs> I mean, everyone is watching, but there's no one you can talk no. to or get any help. So, Yeah, no, true story. 
even if you could ring somebody, I probably wouldn't ring them. I'd say, Michelle, call them. <laughs> I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> wow. So here we are on a podcast on a yeah. third party application where we can't talk to anyone and then <laughs> talking about what our endeavors are on other social media platforms <laughs> where we can't basically talk to anyone or they're shutting us down because we are making butter knives or <laughs> But I mean, yeah. showing dismembered bodies after car crashes and so on, that's, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> Murders and bombings and whatnot. But uh, say fuck too many times in the beginning of a video and you're banned. That happened to me. <laughs> I said ass two times in the first minute of a video and then they just all right we're not showing any ads here and it's a limited monetization <laughs> and so on and i was thinking all right should i complain and said i was referencing to the animal ass <laughs> but of course there is no point you you will never get to talk to anyone and pressing that button is just it's just a fake loop turning on a lamp so that you know you pressed it but nothing happening so <laughs> so they they shut that video down for monetization. Did, what about the video that where you just made the word "fuck" for the bookshelves? Oh, that that's fine. fine. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's. I talked for more than a minute because when you are posting videos and you are hooking off on the ads, you have to like sign off that you are not showing anything illegal or profanities or anything and then it's the first one minute of the video or something that uh, so i think it is to protect well protect people from clicking on a video and then getting profanities before they realize this is not something that they want to watch and then they can click on the next one but i mean this is american companies god knows what they're thinking <laughs> do you always click the uh, yeah. no it's not made for kids button when you release a video yeah, uh, yeah. I do even though I um, don't think I'm showing anything that a kid couldn't see no but I think it's uh, if it it's more like if you made specific content for kids, you can click it there right. because then it will be showed on the like the YouTube Kids app and so on. So I think I mean nothing is interesting for the kids. So I just press no for. They might like it. I might try it. <laughs> might be a bigger audience. Yeah, you, tr you try it and you yeah. give you give it back. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're losing out on a demographic. Yeah. Maybe we uh, we are a hit with the kids. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should do a kids show, a kids podcast. We could, uh, we have this one, then a half pint, and then the. I mean, you can't have a pint for kids, but how do we? Uh, the a kindergarten special, yeah. where we talk about uh, lots of milk. Yeah, things you can make as a as a like a parent for toddlers. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that could be yeah. great. <laughs> toddlers love a knife, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and sure scissors, do. and scissors are basically two knives which are riveted together. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> double knife. So, talking about knives again, because you know we can't can't let it go. Knives, knives, no, knives, no, knives, no. knives, knives, <laughs> knives, 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 knives. Ass, ass, fuck, fuck, fuck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> See them ban this one. So you said you sent me the uh, butter knife. What did you? What did you think would happen to the butter knife once it came here? Did you think we'd use it? Did you think it would just stay in a drawer? Mount it I as a piece of art? Oh, you have difficulty with, with that word, don't you, mounting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're mounting it, I don't want to know. <laughs> well, technically, it would be possible, perhaps. Yeah. There's a hole in it. <laughs> well, I, I I did not have an expectation other than I was kind of thinking that they would probably make it, uh, try it, give it one go, and then we'll see. Uh, okay. That knife is used every day, Havard. I just wanted you to know. Ooh, yeah. nice. And that's that's a surprise, given that uh, Michelle made, a, I would say, more a, a nicer one. So. I have made one as well since. I just... It, mine's not as pretty as you, both of yours, but it's got a, a chunkier handle on it and stuff. But yeah. she prefers hers for spreading butter, but yours is perfect for the Vegemite jar, apparently. 
Ooh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's the demographic I'm gonna Vegemite <laughs> knife. Yeah. Yeah, my my oldest kid uh, calls that uh, the what was it? Was it the the pretty butter knife or the cool butter knife? Something <laughs> uh, something it it's the best butter knife anyway. Yeah. Because it's the cool looking one. <laughs> I did actually have, I think it was last, no, maybe it was, well, I think it was Saturday. I was uh, having the CNC doing a lot of work. Uh, and then, of course, I just uh, ran the file for the knife. But uh, without the two tones, I just made uh, some templates for uh, just all teak. But that didn't look right. So, I mean, some of the... The design lines of the knife match up with that uh, two tone separation line, so it didn't look as good. I think you need. And of course, I cut them too thin, so they were they were a bit wobbly. I think someone needs to figure out this butter knife thing and actually make a knife out of butter. So you literally just spread the knife on the thing with itself on your bread. I mean, I, I think I could pull off making a butter knife, but. Using that to spread a knife. I mean, <laughs> so, yeah, you that's spread a the hard knife. Bit. You just literally just you could be like a stick, wouldn't it? You just rub it over your bread. Or, I was going to say that. That's but you have that. That's a that's a butter stick. But it should just be a butter stick shaped as a knife. Yes, right? do that. Yeah, <laughs> you need a handle for the butter stick so you don't melt it with your, the warmth of your hand. Yeah, and do you need electricity because uh, <laughs> when butter is uh, cold, it's too hard to spread. So you need a button where you press where it actually mellows it enough with that it spreads uh, nicely. So maybe we should team together and. Uh, yeah, I yeah mean, I'm thinking we should. You should have one of those. What's it called? Pelletier elements. The one side is warm, one side is cold to keep most of the butter co- cold, but one part hot so you can actually spread it and just, yeah you could, could work on this uh, sometime in 10 years perhaps <laughs> <laughs> no no let's do it now I mean next week challenge <laughs> uh, you, you do that uh, I'm right behind you go ahead <laughs> yeah <laughs> what you need is a brush and the handle holds the butter but the handle is also heated so it just oozes through the brush and you just paint it on your bread. Yeah, I've seen people do that with paint. So, uh... the, What, they've got a heated handle? No, not heated, but the handle is hollow. So yeah, you yeah. can just uh, fill paint and then uh, it will slowly yeah. drip into the bristles of the that's brush. Just, yeah. That's easy then. You just need a heating element in there. Yeah, that's... Yeah. That's easy. I got a lot of heating cable now. <laughs> <laughs> not not put everything in the table. <laughs> you done done anything else with that project yet? Is it just on hold? No. You've well, gone I, off it, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've cut all the the wooden part, so it's it's basically just to miter the corners and uh, buy the. The cement and make mix the concrete. So um... you're going back to miters. Last week you declared you hated miters. You were going to butt joint yeah, and I, screw I, I, it. I, I, I did. Which I sounds mean, wrong, doesn't I mean, it? it... <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a Freudian slip. I was uh, I was going to say uh, the jointing the ends uh, in some way, <laughs> <laughs> not with a miter. <laughs> but I, I figured out you. I don't need much screws because I figured out a way to suspend the mesh in between. So I'm going to drill a lot of screws on the inside of the wooden frame. And that will also, the head of the screws will be embedded in the concrete. So it will actually keep uh, yeah. everything tight. Yeah. So I think it's going to be nice. So maybe I don't need to join the corners as well. I can just keep a 10 millimeter gap and say it's a design feature. And, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Thinking outside of a the box. A juice groove, uh, like you have on a chopping board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, if you spill something, that's where you place the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> you actually have that on tables on ships. They have... A table gutter. They have a... <laughs> Yeah, they actually have a gutter in the corner because obviously you spill things when everything is moving, but uh, the the table collects it and then disposes at one corner, so it's easy to clean up. So. It collects it and then shares it out evenly at the end of the storm. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think uh, it's a bit. I'm going to be alone with the youngest one this weekend, so I might not get around to sneak down in the workshop during daytime. So, uh, well, we'll see how the progress is going to be. And of course, uh, there's the hell quarter screaming for completion as well. So <laughs> oh. it's not optimal having two projects running in parallel. Well, that reminds me, you were um, talking about the being alone with the kid. Are you, um, you were doing some dressmaking over the weekend, weren't you? How did that go? Yeah, that went as good as one could have expected. <laughs> of course, uh, when you're going to make your first dress ever, uh, don't let your kid pick out stretch material. Uh, I mean, that's a pain. And <laughs> I actually knew that, but she, uh, of course, uh, I'm, uh, my daughter wants to make a dress. And uh, I said, well, let's go and get some fabric and uh, what we need, and then we can make it together. And uh, we bought a template at the store for the simplest kind of dress. And we cut out all the fabric and pinned it together. And she was running the gas pedal on the sewing machine whilst I was guiding it. And we had a blast. So it's looking surprisingly good, but I have to fit the the sleeves, uh, oh, which, yeah. of course, uh, I mean, the the manual uh, in the for the template is of course uh, written for someone who knows the <laughs> lingo and how to actually do this so it was just a lot of words i don't know what is um but i found a youtube video uh, that sh actually shows how you do this but of course we have sewn a bit too much of the main body of the dress we should have left some seams open to make it easier for ourselves but we'll make it work but it's a uh, it's fun. So it's, I've always wanted these uh, tailors busts where you can actually uh, be a bit creative, and I, I want one even more now. So I think if the, if the excuse is that my daughter can get it as a gift and use it, and then <laughs> I can bring it down in the workshop when I need to make some aprons or something, that it's a, it's a win-win. If I got one of those things, it'd end up being a target. I'd end up throwing things at it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i can see that but given the mechanics and so on it would kind of ruin the function yeah for that price oh. and that of course i'm not sure if we talked about this earlier but of course there's a lot of these busts for sales with women shapes but if you want one that's uh shaped like a, a man that's not very common so those are a crazy expensive <laughs> yeah why don't you oh, make well. one on the cnc like in um, you know cut in cross cross section just layer it up with sheet materials yeah cool. you said that last time as Did well I? not to cnc but why don't you make one i and i've seen i think it was sila foxlin actually made one herself yeah. with like uh, this cling wrap or what it's called and some plaster and uh so I have been thinking about that, but one layer up. Well, we'll see. It's uh we haven't finished our first dress yet, so we'll see. We'll take it from there. <laughs> <laughs> and this would be no good because she wants a male bust, don't you? A male mannequin, and that'd be no good for a little girl's dress. Would it? No, no, and... but for the dress for whole work. Yeah. Although yeah. you do fit your wife's shoes, so... maybe you fit what little girl's clothes as well. I don't know. I'm yeah, not judging well, you can do whatever make, you want, it, mate. It makes me look bulkier. I mean, uh, if there are tights over the arms and shoulders. <laughs> and it's always fun to flex and rip a seam here and there. So, yeah. Just got to hug all the right places. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but it, it is really annoying to see someone who's really good. Um, with the sewing machine because it's you have to do all the preparation and I remember we had like a sewing class in was it uh, 
primary school or whatever it's called. And of course, the teacher said, well, first you have to draw and then you have to put all the needles in and then you have to do a course uh, sewing by hand to keep the fabrics together. And I mean, why do you do that? Just slap it together and run it through the <laughs> machine. And of course, I, I'm still there. I mean, uh, I just want to get to the point where you just sit by the machine. But I have realized that if you want a decent result, you have to do the prep work. Yeah. I mean, that's the same thing with uh, metal work, I feel. Like welding stuff together. No, no, no. Shh. Don't you, have, you have to yeah, put, just... put everything in the right place and align it and measure and fasten it down. And then you can... Ah, now it's done. And then, no, I mean, that, no, no. that's what I'm lacking in my metal work. <laughs> I just, nah, it's good enough. It exactly. You need together. a table. Maybe they'll have a two for one for these. Uh... And the last thing I welded was a uh, 100 millimeter square box section, three meters by two meters together in a mitre. So I don't think I've got, I'm never going to get a table big enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Basically, the. I just need to do small projects enough that I can pull off uh, putting. Uh, like a, a large engine in an ATV and a Barbie cart or something like that. So, I mean, it's a, I'm going to do a small time uh, grind hard plumbing project. <laughs> that's that's a goal. Have you got any dream dream projects in the pipeline, both of you? Anything good coming up? Other than the things you're working on at the moment, obviously, about. <laughs> I have. I have one. I've bought actually two. Norwegian brand retro 70s radios because I want to make an upgraded uh, like uh, workshop radio. I mean, every workshop should have a radio. Uh, and then, of course, it's the problem with not having good radio channels in Norway. So it will have a like a online connectivity so I can uh, listen to online radios. But I want uh, everything to be encased in uh, like this uh, retro cabinet. Nice. So but it needs a careful planning and you need to do it right so it looks good and uh, i'm looking forward to it i have now basically all the parts i think but it's a it's a project i need to devote some time to and like not have several projects going yeah so i half ass it so um so it's and then again, it's not, it's an indoor tinkering project. So I think it will be way after summer when it starts to get dark again and you need to spend more time inside. So, fair enough. What about you, KJ? Anything good coming up? One, I don't know. <clears throat> Adam, I, I went through my, through my list and nothing really pops out as that interesting at the moment. I think <laughs> perhaps I'm in a. I mean, uh, low spot. Uh, just looking at that long, long list and not really feeling anything popping out. For some reason, I I feel an, some kind of urge to make uh, a wooden barrel, like a, a whiskey barrel. Oh, wow, that kind of thing. That would be would would be fun. But I don't really have a use for it, and don't really know how I would do it. So That's I guess I never. Co Coopering uh, looks a little bit tricky to me. Yeah, I mean that's the yeah. fun part. Of, I've ever seen people do it, oh, and it okay. looks it looks cool, but I don't know. But I uh, I might know someone with the the skill and knowledge, and possibly also uh, know how to get the hands on a still. And there's always been nice to make a whiskey <laughs> batch. Of course, you need to. You need to char the barrel, and it uh, is it three or four years it needs to be stored before you can call it a whiskey. Uh, so, yeah, probably, yeah, it would be cool to also have made the bo the, the barrel from scratch. That really yeah. would. I was a little bit excited by the whiskey glasses, and now oh, it's going up a level. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can, well, you can start uh, small. You could make a, a whiskey barrel shaped uh, whiskey tumbler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be interesting to see that with KJ. I don't. I, I actually would have no idea how to make a barrel. 
I mean, I've seen mm. plenty of them fall apart in people's gardens, but uh, so I kind of <laughs> I kind of know the components. Yeah. But to get that right, it looks really really tricky. Yeah, yeah, it is because that's bent wood, shaped wood, and then yeah. all get together, and you have to make everything swell up so it stays jointed as well, don't you? Because it's not glued together. Yeah, yeah, tricky business. Yeah, and now that I think about it, I think one of the reasons is that I've seen my kids playing Kirby a lot, and the character King Dedede there has a hammer that is actually a barrel with a with a handle oh, okay. on it. So that that might be a fun thing to make. Uh, you threw me then when you said Kirby. That was a, a game we used to play when I was a kid, but it was basically a ball, and you both stand on the pathway either side of the road. You throw the ball and try and bounce it on the curb, and it bounced back to you if you got it right. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I see. Yeah, that's what we used to call Kirby. <laughs> I thought that's what your kids were playing for a minute. Should have known there was a more modern equivalent. <laughs> no, no, it's computer yeah. games all the way. <laughs> I, I heard Furby, and I thought, oh, that would be a fun project. And then, oh, throwing it at the curb, that sounds a bit <laughs> rude. <laughs> I think that, isn't that what you want to do with yep. Furby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you curb it hard. But I think after uh, after look, mom, no computer, there's none left to be <laughs> bought <Yeah>. anywhere. <laughs> so I think um, for my next project, I'm either going to do the cigar box, a simple cigar box guitar, and try and learn to play a tune on it. Mm-hmm. But then watching Steve play. Uh, the guitar today and yesterday has put me off a little bit because his fingers are just everywhere and <laughs> both hands are doing different things. And I just... <laughs> when I say fingers everywhere, have on, I didn't mean like that. <laughs> his, his fingers were all over the four strings. <laughs> I mean, four yeah. strings, yeah. yeah. So, uh... yeah four candles, four candles, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of put me off a little bit. I just think I don't. I'm never going to be able to figure this out. But I, I, I might no, give I it a would, go. I would. I would just remove a string. Uh, I said this to Michelle <laughs> earlier. She said, "Why don't you just start out with one string?" Yeah. <laughs> but I, I thought you before you finished the sentence. I, I was envisioning a cigar box, and I'm like, "Ooh, that would be cool." Just standard, but properly made. Like a cigar box, but yeah, of course, slap a neck on it and a string, and then <laughs> one string, <laughs> one string. <Yeah. laughs> so it's either that, or I, um, I think I'm, I'm also going to make the try and make the radio controlled car as well out of wood. I quite yeah. like that idea. Yeah, and you, yeah, you have the laser, so cutting parts for that, uh, or are you going to use like hardwood, or are you going to make uh, plywood uh, parts? And I'm not. I've not put that much thought into it at the moment. I wasn't planning on doing much of it on the laser, to be honest with you. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see. (laughs) You think we're about done for the evening? Yeah. Let's call it in early and uh, do other stuff. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) In which case, goodbye. (laughs) See you next week. Bye. Bye. All right, so what was the juicy thing you were going to talk about? 